Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at finding zeros of polynomial functions based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, which was developed by Carl Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician of pretty prominent renown in his day, which essentially says that uh, if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is uh, greater than zero, then it has at least one zero in the complex number system. We can actually even go beyond that. And that kind of leads us to the linear factorization theorem, where if we've got a polynomial function of degree n, where n is greater than zero, then f of x has precisely n linear factors. So it can be broken up into its linear factors uh, where these are complex numbers. Now they might be real numbers, they might be integers, but uh, they're guaranteed to be somewhere in the complex number system, which essentially then says that a polynomial of degree n has not only just at least one zero, but it's gonna have n complex zeros. Now some of them might be repeats, uh, so they're not all necessarily going to be distinct, so we, we don't necessarily list repeats, like if 2 was a 0 twice, we don't say x equals 2, x equals 2, we just list it once. Uh, but that's what the linear factorization theorem is saying. All right, the rational zero test, in order to see if we can find rational zeros, uh, if the polynomial function f of x, written in our normal form, then if it does have rational zeros, they will be represented by the form p over q, where p is a factor of your constant term, and q is a factor of your leading coefficient. So that's what it says here. p is a factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. So what we're going to do is, based on those values, is create a list of possible rational zeros and test them out. See what works. Example number four. Find the zeros of f of x equals 2x to the third minus 6x squared plus x minus 6. Now your first thought prior to this lesson might have been, let's see if I can take these four terms factor by grouping and it's a good strategy, it just doesn't happen to work on this polynomial. It doesn't mean that it's not factorable, it just means it's not factorable by that technique. So if we do use the uh, rational zero uh, theorem, what we would say is we're going to list all the factors of 6, those are going to be our p's, and we're going to list all the factors of 2, those are going to be our q's. And then we're going to list them in possible quotient. So if I list all my possible factors of uh, the constant, so that's going to be my p list, uh, it's going to be positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, positive or negative 3, positive or negative 6. I will divide those by all the factors of 2, which is positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2. So if I go 1 divided by 1, positive or negative, plus or minus 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, 6 divided by 1, 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, we already have that in the list, 3 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2, also in the list. So all of our possibilities here, and we're going to just divide them up. So all the p's are always going to be in your list because that's going to be divided by 1 and that's always going to be a factor. So we'll also have one half and three halves. That's our list. So now if we're going to do this kind of the old way. We would just start maybe doing synthetic division and dividing each of these in here. See if we can find one that works. That would be our strategy. Well, here we also have the graphing cal uh, calculator uh, as a tool. So, or you could use Desmos and so just go ahead and graph this and see where we have zeros. But in a graphing calculator, there's another strategy. 
So I'm going to press the y equals and input my function, which was 2x. And then to get to the third power, we're going to press the up caret, 3. And now I do need to arrow over to get out of being an exponent. Minus 6 x, and I can just press the squared button or use the exponent button, plus x plus 6. And I could graph this, but I actually want to take a look at the table. So I'm going to press second graph. And you can see we've got a list of x values and y values. And what I'm interested is in the y value column so that I can find the zeros of the function. And if you notice right here, that tells us that 2 is a 0. And you, if you had graphed this on Desmos, you would have seen the same thing, that it crosses the x-axis at 2. It might cross it elsewhere, but that's the easiest one for us to find. So our graphing calculator helped us out there, found that 2 was a 0, and since 2 is a 0, then x minus 2 is a factor of f of x. And we're going to divide that to see if we can come up with the other factors. Factor means it's going to divide it evenly, so I'm just going to do this synthetic division. 2 is a 0, so synthetically I'm going to divide 2, our 0, our k value, into f of x. And since it is uh, a factor, or 2 is a 0, we should get a 0 remainder. So let's go through, we can pause here, go through the synthetic division process, make sure we verify getting 0 as a remainder. We do, and then here is our uh, quotient function, 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Remember, we start with constant x, x squared. So we've essentially factored f of x into x minus 2 times 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. f of x equals x minus 2 times 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now we could try to factor this, but it doesn't factor, so maybe we go to the quadratic formula. And if you work your way through the quadratic formula, you're going to find that you get 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 all over 2. It's also okay to split that up into uh, dividing them both by 2 or leave it as just one fraction either way. So we found all the zeros, used our graphing calculator to find the 2, and then once it's down to a quadratic, we have all of our quadratic solving methods to find the other zeros of the All right, checkpoint. Go ahead and pause the video here and find the zeros of g of x. So our possible rational uh, zeros, our p over q's, are the factors of negative 8 divided by the factors of 3. Here's our entire list that's generated. Our graphing calculator finds that negative 4 is a 0. If we synthetically divide in, we see that here's the proof that it's a 0. And then with this polynomial, we kind of see a pattern there. I'm like, oh, I could also just factor that one by grouping. That one does work. And it does factor into 3x plus 2 x squared minus 1, and then that one's a difference of squares. And so our zeros are negative 4, negative 2 thirds, negative 1, positive 1. We can list it in this notation. Going back to the linear factorization theorem, this would be it completely factored into linear factors. When it's linear factors, they all have to start with x. 
I would probably factor the three out of this one to put it out in front, so it'd be three and then x plus two thirds on this one, but that's how we would get there if we were showing the linear factorization there. So conjugate pairs, if we do get complex zeros, they will occur in conjugate pairs, like 2i and negative 2i, or 7 plus 5i and 7 minus 5i. So all, all complex zeros occur, are going to occur in conjugate pairs. That's also true as long as our polynomial has integer coefficients. It's also true for the irrational ones. A plus the square root of b, if that's a zero, then a minus the square root of b also has to be. So we've kind of seen that already. If we kind of go back for a second, one plus the square root of seven over two, one minus the square root of seven over two Con uh, pairs, conjugate pairs. So example number eight, find the zeros of the polynomial function given the fact that this five plus the square root of two is a zero. Notice that we have all integer coefficients for our polynomial. So this statement is going to apply. So if we know that five plus the square root of two is a zero, what else would have to be a zero? Five minus the square root of two. So those are going to turn into factors. Remember, if it's a zero, that's going to turn into a factor. So x minus that one and x minus that one. I don't think I would want to synthetically divide by this. It is possible, but it's really tricky, and there's a lot of, to it since this is a binomial. It's probably better for us to take these as factors and multiply them together. Before we multiply them together, we're going to regroup this and say, let's distribute the minus and then regroup with x minus 5 and x minus 5. So we would get x minus 5 minus root 2, x minus 5 plus root 2. Multiply it together, it is a difference of squares. So we're going to get x minus 5 squared, we're going to get some canceling, and then we're going to get minus root 2 squared, which would just be 2. So x minus 5 squared minus the square root of 2 squared, and we would get x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus the 2 gets us to this as being a factor. The product of factors will also be a factor. I want to take that now and divide this into this one. Since it starts with x squared, I cannot do synthetic. I'm just going to do regular polynomial long division. So we're going to set it up. There are no missing terms. If you would like to, you can pause the video here, see if you can practice your polynomial division. We would get x squared plus 2x plus 2 is the other factor. And then if we want to find the zeros, we're going to set that equal to zero. It is not factorable. You could do the quadratic formula, but I'm going to notice that it starts with x squared and this is even, so completing the squares is probably going to be our fastest and most efficient method. So let's move the constant over here. Let's go minus 2 both sides. And then to complete the square, half of the positive 2 and square it gets us 1. We'll add 1 to both sides. That gets us to here. This is a perfect square, so x plus 1 squared equals negative 1. Square rooting both sides, we're going to square root the negative, therefore there's the imaginary. And we're going to get x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of uh, negative 1, which would be the i. So we subtract the 1 both sides, x equals negative 1 plus or minus i. So all of our zeros, we had the one that we knew originally, it's conjugate pair, so 5 plus or minus square root of 2, negative 1 plus or minus i. Remember again that the complex or imaginary ones 
they occur in conjugate pairs as well. All right, taking a look at the same, uh, same one, we're going to write F as irreducible over the rationals. Which essentially means that we can't get the I's, we cannot get the roots. So that's as far as we can go. We've already done the work on this. We've got our two uh, polynomials, the, uh, the two factors that were both quadratic. Next task. Write it as irreducible over the reals. So reals uh, are what we're looking for here. Can we break it down any further and get into reals? Not the imaginary, so the I stuff doesn't qualify here. Remember, these came from here, so we'll leave this one alone. But we can break this up based on this. So really, that takes us back to here. And simplify x minus 5 minus root 2, x minus 5 plus root 2. And then lastly, as a product of linear factors, break it down all the way. Now this can break down. It's not going to end up being reals like was required uh, here. So that's going to take us to here. Again, in the x minus this and x minus this format. So product of linear factors, you got to break it down all the way. And what this is essentially saying is, and from before you've said, okay, that doesn't factor it. Everything factors if we're talking about over using the complex numbers. Example nine, find the zeros of the polynomial function. Find all the zeros. No clues this time. So we could go into our graphing calculator, type it in, see if we can find a zero. So go ahead and pause the video here, or use Desmos, find a zero. So it turns out that three is on our list, if you're using the table. So we can synthetically divide by three, knowing that we're going to get a zero remainder. And then once again, we can see, I kind of see a pattern going on here. That's going to lead us to being able to factor by grouping. Or the other thing we could try, especially if you were looking at the graph and you saw on your Desmos graph that at three, yes, it did hit the x-axis and it bounced off the x-axis. That says that there's a multiplicity of that uh, zero greater than one. So three might be a zero again. So if we divide it again, get x squared plus 5 as a quotient, setting that equal to 0 and solving, x squared is equal to negative 5, square root both sides, so we got 3 twice, I don't have to list it twice, but it did occur twice, and finishing this, plus or minus the square root of 5 times i, make it clear that your i is outside of the root. All right, checkpoint, use your technology, use your idea of P over Q, find all the zeros of the function. Negative one was a zero, so we can divide that one. If you saw it occurred twice, we can divide by negative one again. If you looked at the graph and saw that it bounced at negative one, your calculator would also tell you that 4 is there. So we can divide by that all the way until we get down to three numbers here, meaning that that's going to be a quadratic. And then on that one, that one's a good one to solve by uh, completing the square. So we get negative 1, only need to write it once, 4, and then 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.